author and filmmaker Jared Brock has a new documentary coming out. Take a look at this. Josiah Henson was the little known man behind one of the most notorious characters in history, Harry Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom. In talking about Uncle Tom, we have to be careful because it has a legacy rich in racism. The term Uncle Tom has become this derogatory term, but really the character was never written to be that way. Uncle Tom's Cabin was a massive global success. It sold over a million copies in its first year in print and became the best-selling novel of the century. I'm here with three-time author, four-time film director, here to talk about the latest project, Josiah Henson. Welcome, Jared Brock. Thanks, man. You know, it's so good to see you because I love what you have been really entrusted with and gifted to do because uh, some of the other projects that you have done in the past of human trafficking and looking at the red light district and the bearded man and, mm -hmm. you know, some of these projects, they've all had a... Uh, a very interesting connection with setting captives free. Yeah, it's weird. When you think of all my projects, you know, what the beards have to do with slavery, to do with pornography, but there's just this, like, freedom narrative that I keep falling into. Well, it is a freedom yeah. narrative. And, and, you know, this, uh, The Road to Don, uh, we saw just a little bit of a snippet of that yeah. when we, we started off uh, about Je Josiah Henson. And uh, what really prompted you to, to jump into this? It was actually my wife. So she'd been bugging me for years to buy her a copy of Uncle Tom's Cabin. Yes. It was a famous novel in the 19th century, sold more books than any book but the Bible. And um, Michelle wanted to read it, so I bought it for her and stuffed it in her Christmas stocking, and she read it, loved it. I did a little bit more research and realized that it was based on a real man who lived just a couple hours from our home. Oh. So we drove to it, checked out his cabin, and I read his little tiny memoir. Um, Michelle read it to me on the drive home. And I was shocked that I'd never heard of this incredible abolitionist, Christian hero, uh, global speaker, and I just knew I needed to learn more. So I retraced his journey from slavery to freedom, 5,000 kilometers. Wow. You know, that, that's actually pretty impressive because when we look at the current uh, climate and the culture of what's taking place, uh, Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. Colin Kaepernick, and some of the things that are happening, and people are really having their eyes open. And I, I find that, especially in North America, there is a, a concern, and people are saying, you know, uh, do I matter? And, and mm -hmm. does this this, this value, uh, is it valuable to others as well? Mm -hmm. So this particular story is very timely. What did you learn through this process? So, so much. You know, I got to visit former plantations where Josiah was enslaved, where his dad was sold south, where, um, you know, Josiah had his shoulders broken and his arm broken by an overseer. Um, I got to visit spots where he lands on free soil for the first time. I think the big kind of Big lesson from Josiah's life is when he, when he gets to the Detroit River, he's going to cross into Canada, uh, a kind man pays to send his family across. But he asks him a question first. He says, are you going to use your freedom well? And Josiah replies, I will use my freedom well. He makes this promise. He gets to Canada. He doesn't settle into a cushy lifestyle. He keeps going back. And he rescues 118 more people. Yeah. And he wins a medal at the First World's Fair in London. Yeah. And he's entertained at the White House and Windsor Castle and... And he starts a Freeman settlement that grows to 500 people. Yeah. And he raises millions for the abolitionist cause. Yeah. He stewarded his freedom. Well, and we are so rich. We live in Canada and in a great time in history. We have so much freedom. And Josiah's story just keeps telling me, Jay, are you using your freedom well? You know, um, this touched me personally because um, my family comes back from, from slavery. Mm -hmm. And... Um, when I went into ministry about 30 years ago, it was with the African Methodist Episcopal Church, which was... Uh, um, Josiah's, Josiah was a, uh, was a Methodist minister with a 300-mile territory. Exactly. Yeah. He was a circuit uh, preacher as well. And um, I've been there. I was ordained mm -hmm. uh, in Chatham, uh, Ontario. And I was just just weeping and weeping because Canada is the last spike of yeah. the Underground Railroad. Yeah. And therefore, when you look at uh, Josiah Henson, Uncle Tom, we've heard it as a disparaging comment. Yes. 
but he really didn't mind being called Uncle no. Tom. And why isn't this a bad thing when we when we understand it? It's so interesting. So Uncle Tom was written as this hero, right? He he sacrifices his life for the freedom of others. Yeah. But after the book came out, a bunch of racist whites started doing blackface plays. Mm -hmm. And they played all over America, all over Canada, and they made more money than the book itself made. Yeah. And these were, they, they turned the character of Uncle Tom into this degraded, subservient, kowtowing to the white man's slave. That is not who it was supposed to be. Uncle Tom in Josiah's day was Superman. Yeah. And I hope that we can redeem this turn, that we can separate this whole Uncle Tomism from Josiah Henson, and that black boys growing up today, they'll want to be the king of Wakanda, but they'll also want to be an Uncle Tom, a Josiah Henson, a Superman. Well, you know what? I mean, I like what you said. A little bit of Wakanda <laughs> there, and I, I see a lot of people dabbing with this right now. Yeah. You, you, you need to understand that this is, this is a, a very timely uh, piece of literature, but this documentary is um, it's, it's for such a time as this. Uh, tell me, uh, when you start looking at um, your expectations, what's your hope to accomplish mm -hmm. when, when you, you began to read this, what do you want to see out of this? I had no idea that I'd spend two and a half years of my life working on a book and a documentary and meeting descendants and all this stuff. I think I would love, with all my projects, I just want to plant seeds that lead to a better world, to more kingdom come, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so with this project, I really want people to just to understand how much freedom they have and steward it well. I also want people to realize that there are millions of black people in jail right now. Yeah. Right? That there is a huge amount of repression. We don't have a quality of opportunity, of education, of health care, of justice. And these things are worth fighting for. There's nothing to be gained by keeping a huge group of people down. You know, you're, you're absolutely right about that. There's, a, there's an interesting point in Scripture, and it says this in, in uh, Jeremiah 13 and 23. It says, Can an Ethiopian change his skin or a leopard his spots? Mm -hmm. Then may you also do good who are accustomed to do evil. In other words, he said, you were painted with a purpose. Mm -hmm. And whatever that purpose is, what you have to do is understand you're a producer because mm -hmm. God called you for a purpose mm -hmm. and a plan and for a time such mm -hmm. as this. When we start looking at... Uh, this this project, you've got some pretty uh, renowned people, Danny Glover, to be a part yeah. of this. How did you do that? Honestly, it was just God opened doors. Like we've got, we got endorsements from a current African president, from a former prime minister, from governors and senators. Like, I, 125 years, this story has been lying in secret. No one knows who Josiah Henson is, and now is the time to reintroduce him to the world. You know. Uh, Jared, I believe one of your most powerful tools is, is your generation and telling this story. I could share this until I get blue in the face. Mm -hmm. And I've even struggled with that with uh, television because a lot of times people see you that way and they said, well, is he like that when we see him? And how come he doesn't say, uh, what up, dog? What's going on, man? How you, why, how you feeling? You know, and, and, and why aren't you talking like that? Well, on this medium, I have to communicate in such a way for people to understand that God loves them, has a plan for them, and he's able to do everything but fail. Mm -hmm. But you've been able to take this and take it to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. And I'm praying if we would just grasp this, and if you haven't gotten a copy, it's just coming out right now, you need to get your copy. Now, where can they find this? It's everywhere right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, JosiahHenson.com is the best place to start. JosiahHenson.com. Yeah. And uh, when, you, when you look at the, the final with this, and just a, uh, a clear, just a statement, mm -hmm. what will we get out of this? It's a verse in the Bible. It was for freedom that Christ has set us free. We are no longer in chains. Do not get bogged down with slavery again. Amen. But when, and, and I, I've got to say this, because I, I can't miss this. Josiah Henson was about to commit murder because he was beat so bad, both shoulders. But what, what happened in that? He literally raises an ax to kill his master and escape north, and he hears an audible voice. The Holy Spirit. Yep, and he realizes that he would rather live and die as a slave than somehow live as a murderer. Yeah, so what we're talking about is the value of staying in the fight. Not mm -hmm. just, you die once, but you have to live daily. Mm -hmm. Jared Brock, magnificent. Thanks, Ryan. The Road to Don. You gotta get your copy. Josiah Henson, modern day hero.